Welcome low ego action heroes. I'm Debbie Levitt from Delta CX. We are a full service CX and UX consultancy. And this is my Axure 10 core skills course. I've been using Axure since February, 2011, and I've been teaching it for many, many years. And in fact, I've been one of Axure's recommended trainers since 2014. This course is designed to take you from super Axure newbie or Axure afraid all the way through to confident intermediate. So if you've landed on this one video, there are many, many others. Please check our Axure lessons playlist for a lot more videos about using Axure. The Delta CX YouTube channel has over 500 videos on it as of when I'm recording this in December 2021, and I hope you'll subscribe and join in some of our live streams. I'm live usually three or four times a week with teaching UX research and design, talking about CX, helping people get into the profession, helping leaders and managers, and of course, don't forget, Tuesday office hours, ask me anything. So subscribe and hang out here. So thanks for being here. Please subscribe and let's jump into that next actual lesson. To end our time together, I just want to remind everybody that you can always go to the Axure page on the Delta CX website. I'm changing the website, but you'll probably find it under something that looks like training and then rapid prototyping with Axure. And this page will tell you more about any live workshops I'm doing or new courses that I have. Or of course, if you're, you or your company want any private training, there's information there about that. But to wrap up our time together, I want to show you a complicated uh, file that I built in 2011. And uh, you won't be able to do all of this and you're going to look at it and get a little bit mind blown, but I want to make sure people are a little bit more familiar with what Axure can do once you get more advanced. If you've been doing my core skills course, then you probably still feel very beginner or maybe a little bit intermediate. There's going to be a lot of advanced stuff in here, and uh, you can download this file. Check the um, uh, description of the YouTube video for the download. But I want to show you some of the things that are going on in here because they will be more advanced uses of things you've learned. So uh, take a look at, for example, these are hotspots. As people click on different uh, color options, we are just setting the um, a selected state so we can have that rectangle around them and we're going to also change in this dynamic panel we'll change the um, preview they're seeing so each uh, this dynamic panel just has a bunch of mugs in different colors so that they match the one people have selected so that's set panel state and um, set variable value of item discount now for item discount they're all one except for orange Orange is a 59% savings, which means I'm going to be multiplying things by 0.41 later to be able to have 41% of the price. Um, so that's a little sneaky thing I've done later. Yes, Axure does real math, and I'm going to be doing a mountain of real math in this prototype. I find that my banking, finance, and fintech, e-commerce, and other clients love, love, love Axure, and there's really no replacement for it because of the amazing, cool, realistic math it can do. And of course, you'll learn more about that in my advanced skills class. Um, but for now, let's take a look at some of the pieces of what the heck is going on here. Now here, since this is an e-commerce order, we are giving people a certain date with free shipping. And if they want to pick a different date, we have a dynamic panel here. So when they click on this, this panel shows up and we can isolate it so you can get a good look at it. And we let people pick from different dates and prices. Now, this was an early concept. We ended up going in a different direction with this for the final version. But in general, you can see what we've got here. These are just widgets. Um, and then this is a hotspot on top of them. So if people click anywhere here, stuff happens. So if they pick the free shipping, We've got, first of all, hide this panel because it's acting as a bit of a, uh, an overlay or a pop-up or even like a very complicated drop menu. We've got what date, uh, selected need date by panel to 21 June. I'll show you that panel in a moment so you can see where we're changing something else when people select something here. The shipping cost is zero because I'm saying this is free shipping. 
And then there's going to be shipping text that I'll show you in a moment. And it's going to say shipping. Now you would say shipping should say shipping, Deb. Why is that special? Well, let's see what happens when we click on Wednesday. Wednesday is a much higher price. And so we're hiding the panel. We're selecting uh, June 16 in a different panel. We've set the shipping cost manually to 326. So this isn't text on widget because the widget actually says plus dollar sign 326. I just need the number. So set it manually to 326 as the value. And set the breakdown shipping text, which I'll show you in a moment, to expedited shipping. Ooh, okay. Same thing over here, except now it says rush production and shipping. And uh, same thing here. So as people select this, let's take a look at where those effects happen. Let's click away from this open dynamic panel. So you can see under this blue hotspot is a purple dynamic panel. Here it is. Let's go to the outline and let's see if we can find it. There we go. Selected need by date panel. You just saw that this was uh, going to change something here when people chose something from that row of dates. So we've got June 21, we've got June 18. So each of these has a matching date to the one that they picked. It's really just copy paste. And that way when they pick something from that menu, it shows up here. I'm not going to go too much about what's going on here. I went a little wild with this, so disregard that. Um, it's super wild. Okay, so we've taken a look at selecting uh, different colors and how one of them has a discount. And there are a pile, by the way, a pile of global variables happening behind the scenes to help me facilitate some of this math. And you can see I've also given things default values so that when the page loads, we already have certain things uh, in kind of Axure's memory, uh, but they'll change if people make changes. So what's the sales tax rate? We're pretending this is the sales tax rate. Um, starting with a certain quantity, no discount here, it'd be one price each. Are they adding add-ons for print type or location? I'll show that you that in a moment. Is there a discount? Subtotal, subtotal. So I've got a whole bunch of, of different things that I'm grabbing here. So let's talk about that uh, other thing that I just showed you, which is this panel. Let's open this up for a moment view all. So similar to the other panel, if you uh, want one color, which is the default, that's going to be a $20 setup fee and 16 cents per item added on. Um, again, complicated math stuff. You don't have to do this and you're not going to necessarily know how to do this after watching these videos. I'm just watching how techniques you've learned, like setting variables and showing and hiding things all come together in a really complicated file. So these are variables. I know this because it says set variable value. Value, show or hide this panel because I've made a selection and set selected to one color. So these change the price. If I if someone clicks three colors, we're using a higher setup fee and a higher per piece add-on price. Again, this is just for the realism of e-commerce. You definitely don't have to go this far with some of your e-commerce stuff. Laura Mipsum and pretending it gets added to a cart, that's all fine. In this case, we wanted to try to do realistic math because of something that we were designing where we actually were usability testing something about the way the math was done and the way the information was shown. So we wanted to make it highly realistic Realistic. Same type of thing for print locations. If you want front, if you want back, we set different prices and different variables. And if we do a preview of this and we take a look at our console, you will see I've got a bunch of variables and we can see some of them changing as we make some different decisions. So for example, orange should change our item discount because that one is on sale, uh, not choosing orange. We'll take our item discount back to one because there is no uh, sale on that one. Changing the shipping date where you need it. So if you needed this shipped really fast, we could choose that. 
That's going to change uh, some information over here. Here's shipping cost 407. That's where that was selected. And also you saw it was changing some wording. That's down here. Here's that rush production and shipping wording that you saw it changing. If I go back to free shipping, you'll see it says shipping and it says free. And I'll show you how I got free in there a little bit later. Um, but it, for now, these are changing the words. I have something else in Axure writing the numbers here. So that was just changing the words and setting the variables. Oh, what else is going on on this page? You probably also noticed when I pick a different color, it shows a different preview here. So that was just states of a panel. And now let's talk about our tiered pricing. There's some really complicated things happening here with our tiered pricing. So you'll notice when I click a different tier, it changes the quantity to the minimum quantity of that tier and all the pricing change. So if I go back to 72, this says 72, all of the pricing changes. Again, that's for the realism that I decided I needed to build in because of the usability testing. So uh, let's go back and see how some of that came to life. So here, this is a dynamic panel and we can take a look at what clicking each of these does. Okay, so if I click on 72, write 72 on that quantity box. Uh, oh, sorry, that was a variable. Set the variable quantity to 72. Write 72 on the quantity box, the input field, which I called UGC quantity input. And make sure to set this one to true. So that gives us that outlined look. And um, of course, there's a, there can be only one here. So only one of these can be, uh, can look selected at a time. Now, what else is going on here? Down here, we've got uh, the math being done. But as you can see, these are just widgets. The math is happening somewhere else. And then it's being written here. Hmm. Anybody want to guess? Anybody? Anybody see a hallmark of Deb's files? How about this? Here is the Deb listener. That's right. I've got a listener running here and it's doing a whole bunch of my math behind the scenes every fraction of a second. So of course, the listener panel, we can find it in our outline, is two states, state one and state two, both empty. And if I click to the page, you can see I've got the listener starting by doing the next and the wrap and every 200 milliseconds, which means this will try to fire uh, five times a second. And what is it trying to fire five times a second? All of this. I know you're getting dizzy and you might have vomited and I apologize. So of course I do not expect you to be able to build at this level yet. This is kind of the goal. When you get really comfortable with Acture, which I do think could take a year of using it frequently. I don't think this is the type of thing you might get to in weeks, but hey, if you do, that's great. But um, don't be mad at yourself if you don't. So the idea here is that this listener is controlling a whole bunch of things on the page every fraction of a second. And you might say, well, wait a minute, Deb, there is so much stuff Acture is doing here five times a second, this has got to slow the file down, right? It really doesn't. If we go back and take a look at this, I can use this and let's just get the console out of our way so we're focused on the page. Remember that the, the um, listener is mostly controlling the math being done and written down here. So if I change pricing, this math changes. If I change this tier, this changes. If I say I need 400 mugs, this changes and this changes. So it's not like the file is working any slower. This really feels instantaneous because I set it to 200 milliseconds. So it goes pretty fast. Um, so don't worry about that. What tends to slow Axure down tends to be repeaters and large images. Um, if we do the advanced course here and uh, I show you one of my repeaters, that repeater is sometimes a little bit slow because it's got 41 very high quality images in it, though I will say that as they 
rebuild Axure and make it uh, a performing better. I find that some of my older files that used to feel slow don't feel so slow now. So always improving. Let's dive into this repeater and learn what it's doing. And I'm just going to start here since I realized looking at this file, I kind of didn't need this first one. But let's take a look at all of these. And you might start to realize these are related to each of the pricing tiers. So I'm asking Aksher to take a look at the quantity input. That's this field over here. And you can see it's got its own mess of stuff. Please don't worry about it. Um, I've done some very advanced things there, or at least advanced in my opinion. But looking back here, I'm saying, hey, Aksher, let's jump into this condition and look closely at it. Is the text on the quantity widget greater than or equals to 12? And, so match all, and is the text on the quantity input less than 24? That's going to create that tier where it's either 12 to 23, but not 24, because this isn't less than or equals. This is just less than. So, hey, Aksher, is the number on here 12 to 23, which is what I named my case? Then I want you to go into the price each variable and change it to 238. And I want you to set selected on my tiers of this first one to true. And we can see this in action again if we take a look at the console and we go, we find price each, which is over here. Okay, so it says 144 now. And if I change this quantity to a higher number, 550 then you can see I'm now in this tier. So this tier lights up and my price each says $1.13. If I decide I only want, only want 55 of these, this tier lights up and my price each is 179. All of these numbers until the last one, this is the last one from all the tiers. And it says, if it's more than 25,000 of an item, here's what you should do. And again, notice these are all ifs. I didn't use else. I, I did toggle if or else so that they're all if. Remember, if we have an else, Axure sometimes stops trying to run these cases. And I want Axure to try to run all of these cases, not just pick one and stop. Now, the next two go together. Is this going to be paid shipping or is this going to be free shipping? How do we know? Well, is the shipping cost variable equal to zero or not equal to zero? And remember, that was set from up here when people picked which shipping they wanted. The shipping was either a dollar amount or it was zero if they picked this version. So over here, we've got free shipping. If the shipping cost is zero, write free. Or if the shipping cost does not equal zero, write dollar sign and our variable for shipping cost. Remember how we dropped in those variables in our earlier variables lesson? So that looks like this. Right now, the shipping is free, so it just wrote the word free. But if I pick something that has paid shipping, Axure will drop the number in here. And that's also why when I set the variable, I set the variable to a number with the two decimal points. If I had only put 326, this would just say dollar sign 326, and it wouldn't look quite right with the other prices. I had to put the two decimal points. You could mess with that later in Axure if you want. I guess I could put dollar sign shipping cost bracket bracket dot zero zero, but because I'm doing math and all, and because I like to be specific, I, I did it that way. You could have done it either way. So what else does this listener do? This listener is constantly checking if people are trying to order a blank item or they're trying to order a not blank item. This gets a little bit more complicated, but the blank item lived under here. So this means there won't be any printing on here. The item would be blank and that changes the pricing and it, cha it took off the do you want printing on the front or back that was over here. I don't just disable stuff, I just take it away. Like you can't have front or back printing if the thing is blank. If you've got one color printing, then sure, you're, you might need front or back or both types of printing. So that was something that is controlled here from the listener and again, it's controlled from the listener because I want to make sure that Axure is checking for these things no matter how they happened. Whether they happened because the user clicked or some sort of domino effect that, that I created, hey Axure, just go check what I said about this item. 
if this is zero, then this must be a blank item, and I want you to sh not show. I want you to hide or show the print locations panel, and also set some numbers. So, um, okay, if quantity, if value of focus equals quantity, set text for your total budget text. Um, I'm not going to go crazy about what I did with the budgeting here, so skip some of that wacky stuff. Um, take a look at no discount. Um, so what if people uh, do not get a discount? If quantity times price each is less than 500. So another thing that this company does is if you are placing a larger order, you can have $50 off. So notice here, we imagine there was a save 50 discount code. It's going to give you $50 off. I need to make sure that that 50 is part of the math so that Axure will subtract it in my giant math adventure later. So see, discount is 50. But if I'm placing a small order, I don't get that discount. And you can see here in my uh, variables, discount is zero. So that way the math is accurate. You are really getting the $50 off or you are you do not qualify for the $50 off. And I'm determining that through a math function itself. Take a look at this. Hey, Axure, if the value of quantity times price, because the discount is not everything including tax and shipping, the di well, the discount doesn't check for everything including tax and shipping. The discount is just, did you buy enough uh, $500 of product before tax and shipping and setup fees and stuff. So I want to know if quantity times price each is less than 500. If so, your discount is zero and you're not going to see the save 50 panel with the push pull. And if it is greater than or equal to zero, I do need to write out my condition here because it's an if not an else, then your discount is zero and we're going to show you that panel. And now you can see a giant, giant monster thing here that says, if true, this technically has no condition, which means it's going to run no matter what. There's no condition that's possibly stopping it. Yes, you can create that. You can create a case that says, if true, and have no condition, which means Axure is just going to run this thing. And it's something you have to do when you have a whole bunch of other cases with conditions, and then you have a case that you realize you want it to run no matter what, and there is no condition. So here's where I'm doing bits of the math piece by piece. So I want the setup fees and, and of course, writing some of this uh, down here where we have this information. So I want you to write uh, the setup fee on the setup fees. I want you to create a subtotal. Now, obviously, this is some crazy, ugly math, and this is not going to feel comfortable possibly at all, but certainly until you do my advanced course or some Googling on actual math. So you can see I am in various math expressions multiplying the quantity times the price each with its item discount and then adding the print type and the print location and then the setup fee and the shipping cost. And then I'm rounding that to two two decimal places because sometimes when you do math in Axure, you get 10 decimal places and that looks wacky. So that's how I calculated my subtotal. And then, uh, but notice you don't necessarily see the subtotal anywhere. I'm just kind of grabbing that number behind the scenes. So I'm taking the subtotal and I'm dumping that in a variable. So people don't even see the subtotal. This is a number I'm using behind the scenes. So I can then take that and kind of baby step test it. And then I can add sales tax to it. So see the sales tax is going to be the subtotal times the sales tax rate with a with my fixed two decimal point points. Um, so you can see I'm kind of doing the math in pieces. Some of these are set variables, so I can hold this math behind the scenes, and some of these are set text. So product subtotal, which is this product guy over here, how did I calculate that? Quantity times price each times the discount with the fixed decimals. So this whole case does a bunch of the math on the page and writes the numbers where they go. And it looks like something here got, got removed, so I, I can take it out. And then eventually we do the grand total, which in a sense is the easiest thing on the page because it's add the subtotal to the calculated sales tax, subtract any discount, which might be the $50 or nothing, 
and make sure that's rounded to two decimal points. That was the easiest. Um, but the rest of this, as you can see, got pretty ugly and was a difficult math expression to write. Um, but again, this is the type of thing I teach in the advanced class. Now, there are some other things here that I do teach in my advanced course. One of these, for example, is um, this guy. Um, we did not learn that in core skills. Uh, we learned that in advanced. Um, it's a fun little dude. And, uh, and I use that from time to time. So um, especially in my e-commerce stuff, sometimes in financial stuff. There's a lot of other stuff in the advanced course like sliders on a number line and math and repeaters. So, um, so there uh, should be eventually uh, some a video set on that. Um, but as of when I'm recording this, which is Christmas Eve uh, 2020, I haven't recorded the advanced skills yet, but we'll get that on the to-do list. So check the playlists on the Delta CX YouTube channel for uh, any other actual courses. Um, let's see. So I think that's mostly what I wanted to show you, but there's a lot here that's also quite simple. So for example, here's our tabs. Here's our tabs with our lines and here's our dynamic panel. That's going to give us um, different state, our details, our dimensions, our description. This is just uh, simple tabs, just like we learned. Um, let's see, there's a fake panel. There's a giant fake panel here, which is like, I'm calling it bottom of page panel. So I can just super cheese out and just put the whole rest of the page on the panel. That helps me um, with uh, push pull things. So moving things out of the way, then the whole page moves together. But I, I tend to, I, that's just a habit I tend to have, especially when Things in here might not be dynamic. You can see this one's a component. It has the pink mask. Um, when I tend to do these things, uh, I, these are old forces of habit, like just stick the entire bottom of page in a panel so I can easily move it together. Some people group it. You know me, I'm a panel head. So um, there you go. Again, here's another hotspot and it says, scroll to widget. We learned that one too. Jump down the page to where the reviews are. So that means we're going to jump down to where these reviews are. You know how to do that. Um, you can see this isn't interactive. There's nothing on it. There's no lightning bolt, which would show interactive. There's no panel. So I put this here, but I didn't make it work. Um, we weren't usability testing this, so we didn't uh, bring it to life, but we were definitely usability testing how people felt about the different pricing and the way that you chose different things. And ultimately we did change this design in response to that usability testing. Um, but this is where uh, the concept started and then has improved and evolved since then. Um, so again, a great example of where realistic prototyping, it, it, there's really no replacement for it. You're not going to be able to go into Figma, Sketch, Envision, Adobe XD, um, at least not as of Christmas 2021, and say, I want 127 of these and have all of the math be absolutely realistic to what this company would charge you and to also have different um, setup fees dropped in here or shown behind that. We actually have show details. This is a show hide panel with a push pull widget. So you know how to do that too. And some of the math we did behind the scenes was dropping into this. So now that I have it shown, if I change my colors, you can see the imprint charges and the setup fee changed. So that's another thing that uh, you could know how to do by now. You also see how it moves the whole bottom of the page out of the way. So push pull works at least that day. I didn't have anything related to the zip code. Uh, I didn't change shipping or, but hypothetically sales tax rates and possibly shipping prices would change if people lived near this company in Florida or far from this company in Florida, or even in just a different sales tax uh, location. But we didn't bother doing that. We pretended the sales tax was the same, no matter what zip code you put in here. So technically this changes nothing. And we also know that because there's no lightning bolt here. There's no interactivity that happens because of this field. I didn't even name the field. So you can tell there's a couple of hallmarks there that says this does nothing, or, or at least it changes nothing. It is a form field, so I can type into it and I can pretend, but it's not actually going to change any of the math or, or anything else. It's there um, just in that kind of low level prototyping sense. 
So yeah, I keep finding more things to show you and talk about, but I think I'm finally done showing this to you now. And of course you can play around with it if you'd like to download uh, the file and maybe try to try it out yourself or reverse engineer some of the techniques. There's a couple of wacky things I did here as workarounds to something that was hard to do in Aksher and they're just not going to make sense and they're going to be too hard to try to explain on this video. So anything you see that says bud, some of my bud and focus stuff is not going to make sense. And so I would say just look out, you know, ignore bud and focus. Some of it is just not going to make sense. I think I had some of that over here. Um, oh, if stock, if, yeah, we pretended that there was only a certain amount of stock on this product. And if there's too much stock, show a warning, or sorry, if there's they, too much quantity, show a warning. Um, we talked about, that's like our showing error messages thing. So if I say I want 6,000 of these, this says, yeah, but we've only got this many in stock. So again, just playing with ideas on how you could, obviously that doesn't line up. It needs a little bit of help, but you can see the, the concept in place. And then if people say, okay, um, so you learned that you'll know how to, I'm sorry, I keep trying to end the video and I keep finding things that I want to say, oh, wait, you know how to do this too. So there's lots of little pieces of things that, that you do know how to do. Um, but obviously I've put these together in a way that you don't know how to do. So you don't know how to move the carousel based on the quantity selected. You don't know how to move the carousel this way. This is a different type of carousel than the one that we learned. I teach this carousel in my advanced course, but I would say this, this file is still worth poking around and, uh, seeing what you can do with it. And, uh, that's why I've made it available for download. So on that note, this course is over and I hope to. Uh, get your questions and hear from everybody. Remember here live on the YouTube channel, we do office hours, ask me everything ev or anything, ask me everything and anything. Usually every Tuesday at 6.30 PM Italy time, check, especially during daylight savings time for what time that is for you. I take questions about CX and UX, but I'm also going to start taking questions about Axure. So if you have a file you're trying to troubleshoot or something you're trying to build, you can come and ask your Axure questions questions and I will open up a file and answer your question for free. Um, but again, if you don't like free, <laughs> you also have the paid uh, option over on my website. You can find, um, some paid actual training options, especially if you'd like to level up your team all at the same time together with me there with you live, probably remotely, depending upon when we're talking about this so that everybody can get personal one-on-one -on -one help as they build along with me. So thanks for coming on this journey. And all I can say is happy actioning to everybody. And I hope to see you in other Delta CX videos and live streams. Thanks again.